So what you can see here is basically just a, a rows and rows of disk drives. So these disk drives, which are uh, uh, swappable, are the 500 gigabyte disks. And they plug into a, a backplane that's completely passive. There's no wires in this box. So one thing we're very proud of is that <coughs> there's some people who try to put lots of this in boxes and they have these unbelievable spaghetti mess of wires. But that doesn't help the reliability. There's no wires here. Uh, we have redundant cooling in the front, redundant power in the rear. And the thing that, that uh, powers all of this is this two socket optron controller which plugs in from the rear. So what we have here is a conventional, you know, galaxy style uh, system. It has four gigabytes on the motherboard. We have another uh, two PCI X, uh, X slots and a service processor slots. So it has the same service processor management as all the other galaxy systems. And uh, again, this is basically a Galaxy 102, which is the X4100-200, together with 48 disks and a lot of I.O. in the same box. Actually, the one question people keep asking is, how is this cooled, right? Because it looks like no air gets through here. Mm -hmm. Well, the disks are only one inch wide, and we have 12 disks across, right? But the box is actually 16 inches wide, so that's 25% of the area. Basically, what's covered up with these airflow tunnels is the air goes between the disks. And... Um, uh, the temperature increase from the front to the rear of the box, it crosses this is only 5 degrees centigrade, so we get very, very good cooling through this box. It actually cools much better than blowing the disks, the air through a backplane where the connector blocks the disk, uh, the, the airflow. So, so cooling works great here, you know, there's two power supplies, there's redundant power and redundant cooling, and um, the CPU which is a two, two socket dual core, four cores running at 2.6 gigahertz. So it's a, it's a very nice application machine for people that want lots of local data. The, the RAID system here works across all the disk drives, so if any one of these disks fails, and this will fail over time, they will be rebuilt on the remaining disk. But it, it, we don't have fixed RAID groups, so most people have like, you know, six disks under one RAID controller, and if you're down one disk, you have to rush out to replace that disk, otherwise you, you know, you're not protected. But on this system, any disk can fail in any sequence, and we can rebuild the disk on the remaining the, the, the disk. So if you accept a capacity reduction of about, I think the, the prediction is that one disk will fail like once a year, of say four or five disks over f five years, you never have to touch the box basically. And you know, if it is feels will just be rebuilt, but you never need to know about it. So this saves the EMC repairman from having to run around to change disk drives. And that's actually a very expensive thing to do. So the, from a cost of ownership level model, it's much better to leave the best disk, bad disks behind and not have to rush out to replace them. Uh, plus in a few years, nobody makes this disk anymore. So the other problem is this disk keep, keep getting denser every year. And, Typically, after like two years or so, they're no longer available. So you can basically put the spare seat in a cabinet, or you just leave them in the box, and they're ready to be put in uh, to engage when you need them.